Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, slide on over, like, and subscribe. Cleaning up some mess today. We're not working on the motor. Got a little bit of fabrication work to do. So what I'm going to do is fix those ends because they're wore out on the scraper. Ugh. Yeah, since now it's good, I can't get it in there. I have to bend that out dropped it in had to wedge it out we're gonna weld it so it doesn't pop back out up here see how that's way too far over but yeah too much wear So, if you guys remember, I said I had to weld something a few videos back and I never got around to it. So these are the alley scrapers to the actual barn. And what was happening was, when it went to reverse, this was worn enough right in here that it would slide up and it would pop out and then it would leave the sled. And then the sled would be there and it wouldn't be there along with these pins are worn, which wasn't a huge thing, um, but eventually they were gonna fall out. So, re-weld those, reinforce this side, reinforce the rods, reinforce that. Still got to do where the kick stop is right here that slides back and forth. That broke off. So, I'll have him set it down. He's going to go grab the other one because the other one's broken too. Um, they just wear off. Manure is aggressive and a corrosive. And uh, these are 10 years with really minimal messing around with them. So... Alrighty, come forward. Clean my mess up. Yep, set it down right there, nice and slow. And once it starts setting, yep, back up, nice and slow. Keep going down as you back up. Yep, keep going. Go down. Nope, go. Back up and go down. Yep, go down. Go down, go down, go down. Yep, keep going. So I got two pins. These pins drop right in here. And I already reinforced that. So they drop in, they hold the wings on. What goes on is those wings, when it's pushing, they go over to the stop. When it's coming back, they just ride right up. So this one that's all loose and worn, I'm gonna cut right off because they're gonna go in a straight line anyways. Um, you don't want them crooked because it drags manure. And if they wear out, they drag manure. So what I got going on with these pins, they're supposed to be like that. And that end's all worn out and the top's almost gone. So one day, this would get to the end, that pin on the top was gone, that would fall in. And this would be in the manure pit. Not a major thing, because it would sink. We'd never find it. More of a headache, because then we'd have to build a pin to hold the wings. So I'm going to reinforce that up, and then we're going to put a plate on the top so it doesn't fall in. Put some. I got some washers I think I'm going to do. So, Granted, it's manure equipment, 
everything should be galvanized and whatnot, but it rots away. First time I've really ever welded on these. We weld on these stops and the pieces that switch back and forth for direction. Um, but overall, I've never welded up here, never welded any of that. So I'm going to call that a win after 10 years of being probably one of the worst environments you can put equipment in. Pins are done. Welded them up. They ain't perfect, but they're a hell of a lot better than what they were. So they're gonna fall right in there. They're sitting on the bottom. I gotta put the wings on still. So did both sides. Gotta take this cover off. If you don't have a Milwaukee half-inch impact gun, you're just missing out. Get one. I don't. I don't care what other brands you add because this was a game changer. So, take this cover off. This is the actual mechanism inside that switches it back and forth. Granted, you need to give it a little force, but. So, what goes on in here is that falls down depending on which way it is. So, right now, if it was back like this, that's sitting on the ground right then there. When that whole rail moves, and I'll. I'll explain a little more when we're out there. When that whole rail moves, it slides up, grabs onto a hook, this grabs onto a hook, pushes it. Then when the rail moves the other way, it slips past this, goes all the way to the end. Another hook gets grabbed onto, pushes it the rest of the way. When it gets to the end, underneath here actually pushes it one way or another. So there's supposed to be this little tab right here. Um, that allows if you want to kick it so for bedding or something like that and it's in your way you kick it make it go the other way um, and then it gets to the end and it comes back so missing that which is a pain so they break off over time we'll get that wedged up and weld another one on got that little nub welded on there so I did end up reinforcing the side a little bit it doesn't touch it doesn't get close to it that'll wear itself flat but this actually rides on these, um, but it's always good to have a little extra metal there. So let's get this top put back on. And uh, I think that's how it goes the way it went. So get the top put back on, and I'll show you how it slides back and forth. I hope. Well, see? A little tighter since I welded some of those reinforced on the edge it's rubbing that'll wear itself down but through a few passes through the barn it will be good so I guess we'll just get the wings in and uh, we'll be done with this one Wow look at that wear mark maybe we'll weld that up let's check that out so that's where it stops against itself. It's wore through that. So I'll just weld that on both sides. I take it. Let's go. Weld that up. Got a little pinhole leak, which is fine. Welding stuff that's been in the manure, not that much fun. If you haven't done it, and you want to tell me what I'm doing wrong? Go ahead. But you're probably wrong. Clean metal. I love welding clean metal. I don't weld it very often. I just don't get that lucky, people. So, slide this in. 
pin down through. Oh wow, that is beautiful. Sits up a little bit, which is fine by me. It's gonna wear itself down to get in there. We'll do the other side. There it goes. Going back to duty to push manure for another 10 years. I hope. Ah, probably not. There's other parts that are gonna break, wear out, that we never mess with that are pretty good right now. We got a special treat. Diamond C, new trailer. Brother upgraded from PJ. How's it pull? Pulls pretty good. Pulls good? Ramps are better than the PJ, but. Ramps are better. It's on a ball right now, it's on a pinch on the PJ, so I can't really compare. Jack works better? Jack is better. Happy with it. There you go, people. Diamond C review. So he had a PJ trailer. He didn't like how the ramps were. He didn't like how the jack worked. Your hands were in the way. Um, so he upgraded. So he's had the PJ for two years. Um, and that's a sweet upgrade. He sold the PJ two days ago. Three days. Three nights ago. And two days ago, he picked that up in Maine. So, brand new. Well, here we are. So this is running right now. We'll see how good the light is. So this rail right here moves back and forth. There's a stop right here that actually tells it when to go back the other way. Um, and that's pretty much all it does all day long. Well, it is on a timer. Sorry girls, and granted it's dirty right now because it hasn't been running. But he'll come in with this one, hook out girl, and we'll get it back running. I should shut it off, we've pinched them before and bent rails. Set it right down, curl, curl down. Yep. Go up, go up, go back, tip it down, go back. Just gotta watch out on that stop so it doesn't grab it and pull the whole rail. You're good. So. We put the sled back in, it's pushing itself. So we welded a bunch of pieces, pretty much wear stuff, stuff getting worn out over 10 years. So what goes on, the whole rail slides forward. The sled locks in either going forward or reverse. Pushes with it, rail slides back, unhooks, comes back up, grabs another cog, pushes it again. Basically a giant ratchet strap. So it's gonna get to the end and underneath here, there is a reverse, pretty much a stop plate that pushes this whole mechanism. So there it is. It's gonna come back now. I think it's the screw. Yep. So that slides back. Now it's in reverse. So the rail's all used up. It's gonna push back the other way. That will stay in reverse until it gets to the other end or going backwards, however you wanna think about it. These wings fold in a little bit. So the sled goes out, or the rail goes out. The sled underneath caught another cog pretty much in the rail. So the next time it goes back, it's gonna pull the sled just that much more. So what was going on was this, when it goes back, it flips up. It's got a plate underneath. I should have wore, should have welded them a little bit. Um, let me make sure. Maybe I, when we put it down, we had an issue there. So, when it goes back, it flips up. It's got a little skid plate, so it doesn't drag manure going back. What was happening on that one was it would flip back, 
and uh, it would pop out and end up right there. So the next push, it pushed it a little more and a little more. We were worried one day it was going to be in the drain, plus it wouldn't, wouldn't wash itself, which is a pain. I'm okay with them not actually flipping up right now. But I guess I should have welded the bottom on them. I didn't even think about that. Usually the, the barn's pretty clean. Um, it's not clean right now because this sleds haven't been running. So, and this sled got placed down and got sent back. But, so there's three sleds. My father's hollering for me. There's three sleds on three rails, three pistons, one hydraulic pump. Let me show you that so you get a general idea of what goes on there. So this is all it is, is a piston and that's moving back and forth. And there's just a pressure switch, so it moves all three of them. It used to be Norco, which is Gia. Right now it's on manual, but usually you got it on auto. So that's as simple as it is. So here's the sled at the other end. Those wings flip out. That will drop in a second, I hope. So the wings flip out so it doesn't drag stuff back, and these drop. They got to get a little traction when they, when they drop. This one I haven't rebuilt anything on, uh, so I guess it's my next patient at some point. So just finishing up, not gonna crush heifer, which means first time, first calf, uh, first few days of having that calf. So, wow. First time calver, um, and she's fresh, so. I don't know, I think fresh is like 40 days, 50 days. Um, so, milking her. Uh, she calved today. But awesome, the robot, so. Yeah, that wing didn't flip, or that sled didn't flip down yet. So, all about a traction thing. There we go. Ready? Let's see. Yep. So, it flips down, grabs it. So, there's a little bit behind it, but we do scrape it. And it's going to scrape everything here, so the alley scrapers were off, um, which adds some, but when it's all done, it looks like this. Nice traction. All the floors are grooved in here. Um, yeah. some point, I got to give you guys a tour of in here, but giving you a general idea. So that'll do it for tonight. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed learning about alley scrapers. Um, never said the brand. So they are, they were Norpco scrapers that got bought by Gia um that um made it interesting to get parts and stuff so we figured out where stuff goes but no they worked really well odd number of rows three rows so no chain no cables no turn rows stuff like that pretty much hydraulics and welding easy enough to do so appreciate you guys watching make sure you go like and subscribe if you haven't done so i'll see you on the next video with her calf.